stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. Could love me, the sinner that condemned on me. I stand amazed. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. I wonder how he could love me. And my sorrows, he made them his very own. He bore the burden to Calvary and suffered and died alone. Welcome everybody, lovely to see you. 
And a welcome from me. My name's Carol. I'm part of the leadership team, and this is Chris. Thank you. I'm glad you remember who I am. Isn't it reassuring when you've been married for a long while and you're getting older and you can still remember your, each other's names? Absolutely. It's a good thing. Just delightful to welcome you here. If you're in the building, uh, looking at the camera, if you're joining us online from your home or somewhere else, you are just equally welcome. Great that you can join with us um, today. Um, not a great surprise, but we have some notices. Absolutely. Um, so this week, because the children are still on holiday, it's the Easter holidays, it's a quieter week, so there's no children's groups this week. Um, kind of things are gradually starting up. The community hub is going to be back on Wednesday. Of course, the larder never stops, so that is continuing. Um, and we also need Liz now. Do Liz later. We can, we can we'll do Liz in a moment. Liz, okay. if you want to make your way round, if you can hear us at some point, that will be great. She's coming. coming. She's coming. Oh. She's coming. Oh, <laughs> this is called multitasking. Liz was on welcome. Thank you. And Liz is going to tell us about the unlock walk. Right. I don't know, Brian, did you manage to Oops. load that thing on? There we go. Hooray. Thank you very much. Um, the unlock walk. I don't know how many people will remember about the Unlock Walk, but I just wanted to draw your attention to the fact that it's coming along very soon now, in three weeks' time, on April the 27th. Um, Unlock is a very small charity. Um, it's been around for about 40-something um, years. Um, founded in 72, however long that is. Um, and it's, it really runs on a tiny, tiny budget, and it works mostly in London, but in some other inner cities, to try and help groups, churches, youth groups and all sorts of community groups to express their faith in Jesus, really, in the local community. They work a lot in high-rise flats, deprived areas. One of the times we did it, we went through Brixton, and they were doing an awful lot to prevent knife crime. In any event, the vast proportion of their budget, which is tiny, really, it's only about 20 to 30 grand a year, um, they raise on this walk in London. The wonderful Duncan Oakley, who we still miss, used to be a massively passionate supporter of Unlock and he used to marshal us all up and organise us how to get there and whip everyone into action. And when we lost him, we tried to carry on and some faithful people did carry on and then we had the pandemic, but it's been quite difficult really and we haven't done an awful lot with them the last few years apart from a few individuals. So I was hoping we might manage to get a decent group together this year or at least people might sponsor some others and try and raise some money, because we used to be a big supporter on their list, and now we've dropped down, and really, they use every penny really well. And the walk um, happens, <coughs> sorry, every year in a different part of London, and this year it's um, Kensington, Chelsea, Fulham, going past Grenfell Tower. It's always really interesting parts of London. You get a bit of history and there's a quiz, and you visit about seven churches. They're completely different. Sometimes they're huge cathedrals, and sometimes they're tiny little shacks. Um, but all of the communities are involved doing work locally and they all believe in Jesus. So they might be very high church, they might be Ukrainian churches, they might be very charismatic Pentecostal churches, but you meet individuals who are really doing an amazing amount, supported by Unlock. They train people, they send in volunteers, they run courses and they generally give support. Normally, we've gone from Highbroom Station as a group. We don't have to do that. You can drive. Um, and then you do need to commit the day to it, really, because although it's not that far, it's quite slow because time you've walked it all with everybody, got into each church, had a chat, all that stuff, um, it does take quite a few hours. Um, but it's generally been a really good time of encouragement meeting people, talking to each other. You bump into other people. You get lost, if you're me, but you know, normally somebody can find their way around. You need to bring some snacks. Um, there are sometimes snacks to buy in the churches, but you do need to get something. We'll probably go past shops where you can dart in and get a sandwich. Um, but if you have got time or interested in walking, it could be a really good opportunity. Share some time, contribute to an amazing charity. I've got lots of the forms um, with all the details and whoops, information on them and some sponsor forms. I'm doing welcome, obviously, so I'll be back out there afterwards if anyone wants to have a chat about it. I'm not sure how we're going to coordinate getting there because it's a slightly tricky journey, but I'm sure there must be somebody who's much more au fait with the So it's, uh, it's on Saturday the... 27th, 27th of April. Weeks yesterday. So you'll be going and you'll be yeah, walking. Be going, be so going. if you would like, if people, if you'd like to join Liz and walk, yeah. talk to you about that, and you can get sponsored if you're going to do that. Yeah. If you can't go, 
people could sponsor you or other people that are going. So kind of have a think about whether you could do that, even if you can't walk yourselves. Perfect. Thank you. That's brilliant. Thank you so much, Liz. Yeah, don't take our bits of paper, though, otherwise we will be completely lost. So talking about walks, yesterday we had a really good walk. Thank you, Phil and Jill. I don't think they're here, but we had a very muddy, very, very muddy walk yesterday. So maybe if you're part of the Walking Hub or if you've done that before, that walk would be something that you can, um, can do as part of the Walking Hub and just enjoy the day there. It's not uh, the, the walk yesterday was much shorter, but it's been a whole day. Um, today is a family service because it's the first Sunday in April, so it's slightly different for children's work today. So there's no children's groups, but there's toys at the back of the church. Um, if you've got a child and you want to go into the church centre, feel free to. The TV is on so you can feel part of what's going on. We do ask that all children are with their parents. So if your child does want to go into the church centre or needs to go into the church centre, please go with them. Or if they need to go to the loo, please ensure if they're old enough that they come back very quickly. Um, and we we do ask that no child or, or adult without a child is in the church centre on their own, just for safeguarding and safety reasons. We're also... Okay. <laughs> we're also, sorry, going to be asking you not to get tea and coffee during the service. It's just, again, for the safeguarding issue and safety issues. So we have put a tablecloth like we used to during communion when we had tea and coffee at the back. Um, it's just because we need to keep everybody safe. Uh, and so drinks are available before the service and after the service. If you need a drink during the service, bring a thermal cup and fill it up, and then you can sip all the way through the service, just like the vicar does. And there is um, water at the back, so if you're desperate, there's but, always um, water at the yeah, back. Yeah, it's not that we don't want to be welcoming, it's just trying to keep, the, 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 keep this as a safe place. Absolutely. Um, the great thing is, notice is over, but we have got something kind of exciting... Well, Dave, on, uh, actually, uh, 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 is David is David is Dave, David hiding? <laughs> I can't see David. Where is he? Are you right? He's could you you couldn't get any further away, could you? He's near Su the David and Susie, why don't you come and join me? <laughs> Maybe they don't want to. <laughs> hey. David did say to me, I don't talk much. Susie, I have to do all he the does talking. Talk a lot, but he, not uh, <laughs> something exciting happened this week. Yeah. What happened? Do you want to tell us? We got engaged. <laughs> right. There's a lot of. Uh, can, we, um, can we have a close up with the camera on the ring? I don't know that. Can we have um, a camera close up? It's a big Hold it up. Can we, how, <laughs> how, close can we, how close can we zoom in? Shall I go over there? No, 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 no. no. Let, let, I'm just going to stay still. This could be a new game. It's weird. This could be a new game. Oh, there we go. There it is. The, oh. Sparkle, sparkle. I think that's definitely worth a woo. And a congratulations to Brian. We are so thrilled. Where did you get engaged? At Land's End. And was it sunny and, it uh, and romantic <laughs> and all of those things? It was not sunny. <laughs> to the point was... where I didn't really want to get out of the car and I was very confused as to why we were stopping. So I parked the car in the car park and they was like, oh, we've got to pay for parking. Is it worth it? Like, it's raining. Should we Is it worth home? it? No, no. We can't see anything. I know it's Land's End, but you can't see anything. And you were just like, no, I think we should get out of the car. Um, so yeah, I was persuaded to go and stand in the rain. And then he asked the question, and I said yes. And <laughs> big qu a question for David. Did you get down on your knee? Unfortunately not. <laughs> it, was, it was too muddy. It was too muddy. <laughs> oh, shucks. You have to go back and do it again. <laughs> it's okay. We forgive you. You didn't bring something to put on the floor and just kneel down on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we are so thrilled. Are we allowed to, Yeah. Is it too soon to know if there are any plans, or is that kind of... We've got engaged. We've done that. We'll worry about the next yeah, bit we'll, soon. We'll think about the plans. Well, we are thrilled, and we're going to look forward to hearing the rest of it. Can we pray for you yes, both? Please. Yeah? No, come in the middle. Oh. Lord, we just love sharing in people's joy. And this is such precious news, Lord. We are just so thrilled for David and for Susie, Lord. And um, Lord, we just thank you for their relationship, for the love they have for each other. And Lord, for this, this new commitment they've made to each other. Lord, we just thank you and we bless you. And we're excited about what you have for them in the future. We just want to ask that you go ahead of them in everything that they do. Amen. 
Oh, Lord, yes, we are so excited. And Lord, we pray you would just give them all that they need as they start their plans, that you would um, give them peace as they uh, struggle, I guess, with different hassles that happen with getting married. But Lord, overall, it would be a really fun, exciting time. And that, Lord, you would bless them, that you would bless their relationship and you would be with them um, as they look towards their future together. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Big round of applause. <laughs> wasn't too painful, was it? I hope it wasn't too painful. <laughs> okay, we're going to start our service now. So let's just stand and let's just invite Jesus to come. Although he's been here all the time, but let's just uh, focus on him now. So, Lord, we just want to pause. And we want to invite you to come this morning. Lord, thank you for the the highs of Easter and the excitement of the engagement. We thank you for your presence. And Father, we ask that you would meet us this morning, no matter how we're feeling, no matter what's going on, that Lord, we would lay that aside and just allow you to meet with us today. Amen. Let's worship together. Everlasting God The years go by but you're unchanged In this fragile world You are the only firm foundation Always loving, always true Always merciful and good, so good. Yesterday, today, and forever, you are the same. You never change. Yesterday, today, and forever, you are faithful, and we will trust in you. One, you have no end and no beginning. Earthly powers fade, but there is no end to your kingdom. Always loving, always true. Always merciful and good. So. Yesterday, today, and forever, you are the same, you never change. Yesterday, today, and forever, you are faithful, and we will trust in you. Yahweh. in you
greatest day in history Death is beaten, you have rescued me Shout it out, Jesus is alive The empty cross, the empty grave Life eternal, you have won the day Shout it out, Jesus is alive He's alive Meeting face to face I am yours, Jesus, you are mine Endless joy, endless peace Earthly pain finally will cease Celebrate, Jesus is alive He's alive you guys. Uh, it wouldn't be a family service without Birthday. birthdays. Very good. So anyone had a birthday in March? It's now March. April. Where's the year yeah, gone? March. Any March birthdays? Oh, Cut, there's, there's cho there is chocolate price. involved. <laughs> so there is an incentive to come up. Yeah, well, and there is chocolate Aaron, involved. I mean, as you've got engaged, you probably could have an extra one. <laughs> Double, chocolate. <laughs> Double chocolate. Anyone else that's got engaged, there could be chocolate as well. We don't mind. Come on up, guys. Right. Can you tell me your name? Olivia. Olivia. And how old were you, Olivia? Five. You were five. And what's your Freddie. Freddie. And how old were you, Freddie? You were five. Are you twins? No, you are. <laughs> just checking. Just checking. <laughs> you're busy. Otherwise, you had a very busy year. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well, stay there. We're going to sing Happy Birthday. Just stay where you are. We're going to sing Happy Birthday. Any more? Are you? Any more birthdays? Can you tell me your name as well? Are you five? You are five. Oh, four. Four. And what's, can you tell me your name? Jasper. Jasper. And you've got okay. a sweetie. Lovely. Stay there and we'll sing happy birthday to you. Any more birthdays? Were your birthday as well? No, you're just Any more birthdays? Just stay here. We're going to sing. Ta anyone else? Yes, come on. Come on. No, don't be shy. Don't be shy, Chris. I won't ask how old you are, though. 21. Take your, take your pick. Lovely. Why are you frowning? I'm, uh, I'm doing this on behalf of my son, who's 13. So you won't see his face. 
Does that mean you get his chocolate? Twix, Charlie. Do you right? get his chocolate or does he get it? Well, I think I should have it. Frank. I think you should. You're the one that came up. You should have it. Yeah. Definitely. Here it is. Anyone else need to come up on behalf of anyone else? I mean, David, very kind. I'm sure I could think of a relative that had a birthday in April that I could come up for. <laughs> yeah, um, you, you've got a long way to wait. Well, no. Susie, as you got engaged, <laughs> it's worth well, about, it for that. about David? Does he get one as Was well? Was it your birthday? No, D David ought to get one as well. Okay. If, if Susie got one for getting engaged, then David <laughs> should get one. At this rate. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have got a song to sing you, so hopefully the words will come up. Happy birthday to you, to Jesus be true. May he guide and bless you. Happy birthday to you. Buzz. Brilliant. You can sit down now. Well done. That was very brave. Now, it also wouldn't be family service without a game. And I need quite a lot of help today. Um, I need eight volunteers. I was kind of hoping for children. Yeah, Tessa, come, come on, on, Tessa. Yeah, come up. Come on, Robin. Yeah, Olivia, come on. Yeah. Yeah, come just on. keep coming. I need eight of you. So I've got four. I need four more. Oh, God. Here goes. Two more. Three. Up to three. I need one more volunteer. Get a double, might get a double whammy. Just one, that's okay. Otherwise, you're going to get very confusing. That is brilliant. Now, okay, guys, are you feeling fit, active? Yeah, are you very sporty? Okay, we're going to have a race today. We're going to have a relay race. So, we need two team captains Poppy and Olivia, team captains. Okay, so come over here. And um, we need to make some teams up. So, Tess, do you want to come across with Poppy? Robin, do you want to come with Olivia? And come and remind me of your name. Alfie. Alfie. Alfie, come and join Poppy over here. Come on up. Chester. Come on, Chester. Would you mind coming over here? Come up, guys. Remember. Henry. Henry. Would you mind going on that side? And up you come. And what's your name? Ferdy. Ferdy. Come on. Right, Okay. Team one, make it seven. Now it's a relay race. So in a relay race, you have to pass a baton on. Um, it's a very complicated baton. It's a wooden spoon. So the person that runs the first leg, can I look after that? Is that looked after? Okay. Has to pass the baton on to the person that runs the second leg, which will be at the back of the church. And the person that runs the second leg has to run to the corner. And they give it on to the person that's going to run the third leg. And then they're going to come down here and give it to the person that runs the fourth leg. Is that simple? Do you want to decide who's going to run which legs? Do you want to run the first leg? Yeah? Second leg? Yeah? Third leg? Fourth? Yeah? So Olivia, first. Robin, second. Yep. Yeah. Third. And fourth. Now... If that sounds complicated, it's about to get more complicated than that. Because it wouldn't be fun if it was just running around the church passing a wooden spoon on, would it? So there's things to do in each leg. Okay? So you need to listen very carefully. If you're running the first leg, you've got to go up and over. I need some help. Carrie, well done. And Dedo, well done. Okay, would you mind? Oops. Jane, would you mind? So it's very simple. You go, <laughs> you go over and under. So if you're on the first leg, you go over the first one, under the second one, over the third one, and then under the fourth one. Over, under, over. Yep, yeah, does that make sense? Uh, and then when you get to the end, you hand your spoon on. Now, the person running the second leg has to wear a hat, a scarf, and a pair of gloves to run it. So at the back, Carol's going to have the hat, the scarf. And you can't run until you've put them on. You can't, so Robin, you're going to have to put those on. Is that okay? Carol will help you. And when you've, when you've got it on, you can run. 
But you can't pass the spoon on till you've taken it off again at the next corner. So you put it on there, and you take it off there, and then you hand the spoon on to the person that's going to run the third leg. And the third leg is an egg and spoon race. That could have been messy, so we've gone with a plastic ball. So you've got to run with the plastic ball without dropping it. If you drop it, you have to go back and run the leg again. You got that, guys? So if you drop it, don't drop it. Better to go slow and not drop. This is our version of gladiators, really, yeah? You know? So that's going to be on this corner, and Sophie's the marshal. To make sure it all happens properly. And then the final leg is the easy one. It's the sprint. And all you've got to do is run from here with the wooden spoon to here. Does that make sense? So if the people running the first leg stay here, people running the second leg come with me. Come on, Robin. There you go. You come down here. And there's your dressing up things, and you're, but you can't do it until the wooden spoon arrives. Right, to people running the third leg, do you want to go to Sophie over there? And she's got the wooden spoons ready for you. And the people running the final leg, do you want to come here? Yep. And wait for it. And you've got to run that in. And the person that wins is the one that gets to the lectern first. Is that okay? Right. I need some help now from everybody else. Kind of, are we ready? So ready, steady, go! as you can Don't give up, keep going Power up to your fastest speed Short distance sprint race Run, run, run Run with the baton and pass it on Pass it on, pass it on Relay race Take your place for the race Face the finish line Ready, get, set, go! Jump over the hurdles Hop over the paddles Obstacle I'm you too. I quite liked it there. Thank you very much, guys. Go back to your seats. We're going to continue with our reading. Um, that's right, brilliant. Thank you. Um, see if you can spot the connection between the game and the reading. There's your chat. Can I put it down? That's brilliant. Thank you very much for helping. See if you can spot the connection between the game and the reading. <coughs> Yeah, the reading today is taken from John chapter 20, verses 1 to 18. It's the empty tomb. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. 
Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she, went, as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they've put him. At this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have, I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went, went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Graham. Okay, so who was listening? What was the connection? The race. Very impressive. Good. Glad we got that one sorted out. We'll continue in a moment. We're going to carry on with our worship now. Thanks, Chris. Okay, if you like to stand, we're going to do a bit of funky worship now. Chris, is it permitted to get funky in an Anglican service? I have no idea. Okay, all right. <laughs> can relax now. I'll assume we're okay then. Right. There's nothing you can't do You've been faithful throughout history Your promises are true Many people through the centuries Have known and trusted you Everyone can sing the endless song About the wonderful things you do Every moment of every day You've been faithful in every way Every moment throughout history, you've been good, you've been good. Every moment of every day, you've been faithful in every way. Every moment throughout history, you've been good, you've been good. There's nothing you can't do You've been faithful throughout history Your promises are true Many people through the centuries Have known and trusted you But everyone could sing the endless song About the wonderful things you do Every moment of every day You've been faithful in every way Throughout history, you've been good, you've been good. Every moment of every day, you've been faithful in every way. Every moment throughout history, you've been good, you've been good. Na 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 na
every moment, every day you've been faithful in every way. Every moment throughout history, you've been good, you've been good. Every moment for every day, you've been faithful in every way. Every moment throughout history, you've been good, you've been good. song of ages to the Lamb. And all who've gone before us, and all who will believe, will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Your name is the highest, your name is the greatest, your name stands above them all all thrones and dominions all powers and positions your name stands above them all and the angels cry holy all creation cries You are lifted high, holy, holy forever. If you've been forgiven, if you've been forgiven, and if you've been redeemed, sing the song forever to the Lamb. walk in freedom if you bear his name sing the song forever to the land we'll sing the song forever and amen your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name stand above them all all thrones and dominions all powers and positions your name stands above them all and the angels cry holy all creation cries holy you are lifted high, holy, holy forever. Hear your people sing, holy to the King of Kings, holy. You will. is the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above them all all thrones and dominions all powers and positions your name stands above them all and the angels cry Holy, all creation cries. Holy, you 
are lifted high, holy, holy forever. I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my saviour of that cursed tree body bound and drenched in tears they laid him down in Joseph's tomb the entrance sealed by heavy stone Messiah still and all alone let's praise his name Son of heaven rose again. Oh, trampled death, where is your sting? The angel for Christ the King. In robes of white, the blazing sun shall pierce the night, and I will rise among the saints. My gaze transfixed on Jesus' face. Oh, praise the We do want to praise your name. We want to lift up the name of Jesus in this place. Lord, we thank you that you died, that you rose again, and we look forward to the day when you will return. Amen. Make yourselves comfortable. 
Uh, We are beginning a new series this term and I thought I would kick it off a little bit today. Uh, We're looking at encounters with Jesus and how people's lives were changed by meeting with Jesus. I'm a little bit miffed. Do you know what miffed is? It's a technical theological phrase for being a bit put out. I'm a little bit miffed that the archdeacon nicked my reading. So you're going to get it. So you should know all the answers before I even begin, if I'm honest. But there we go. Um, so we're thinking about encounters with Jesus. I don't know if anyone has had an encounter with someone significant. Anyone met any famous people in their lives? Oh, some hands going up. A few, quite a few hands going up. Can I have a microphone? I'm going to run around and find out who these people are. Who, have you, who did you meet, Kim? Go first for you. Well, I think they're famous, um, but like half the England cricket team. Now, yeah, that would do. That would do. England, cr- half the England cricket team. Yeah, Freddie what? What? what Fre- Freddie Flintoff. Geraint that, Jones. That's that's famous. That's famous. Yeah. Got um, Can you better that? Yes and no. I met Prince Charles um, when, he was, when I was on duty. In when the you were a cop. When you were a copper. Did yes. you arrest him? Did you arrest him? No. He Hang on. <laughs> Know this. Okay, well, you, we can sort that one out later. You've met Prince Charles. That, that probably, that's going to take a bit of trumping, isn't it? Nina Simone and Danny Glover. Nina Simone. Oh, I'm now ser- and Danny Glover. I'm seriously jealous. Oh, no. Adrian Plast, the writer. Adrian Plast. Actually, you went to school with him. probably haven't heard of him. I met Dave Allen. I looked after his brother. Oh, really? Okay. Any more I need to run around to? Come on, Cheryl. The gladiators. The gladiators. Oh, right. Okay, cool. Any more? Susie at the front. Oh, crumbs. This this is kind of, um, this could be the talk. This could be, you know, this could be it. Go on. S Club 7. Why? You interviewed them. Okay. For a radio show. Things we don't know. Carrie, come on. Chris Evans, Michael Gove, and Manfred Mann. Ooh, that's not, bad collect- that's not a bad selection. I thought I was doing well when I could say, and I've been completely trumped by Jane, I was going to say the Duke of Edinburgh, but you've met the King, so that kind of beats the Duke of Edinburgh, doesn't it? That does trump that one somewhat. Um, I only met him because Daniel did his gold Duke of Edinburgh award and Dad got to go along for the, one of the last presentations with the, with the old Duke of Edinburgh, not the current Duke of Edinburgh. Um, and the, my other famous person, and this would kind of separate out the young from the old, was Eric Morecambe. So, and that, that was kind of cool. I, rem- I met him at a, at a pr- the firm I used to work for ran a, a pro amateur golf day. And he was there, and wherever he went, he just was, yeah, he just couldn't stop. My memory of him is, I mean, you can see why he died early, inserting two smoking cigarettes up his nostrils like that and making a funny face. Now, I've really no idea whether or not your encounters with these people were life-changing or not, really. Was it life-changing to me, S Club 7? It set you on the path you're on now. I don't know. Um, if you could meet anybody, if you could meet, if you could, you know, any, if it was any, you could put your hat, you know, you could choose to meet any one person, who would you choose to meet? Simon Peter, that's interesting. Um, Kim? Tim Faust. Faust. He's an I don't know who he is, but never mind. Tim Faust. I, I know we're meant to say Jesus. It's a bit like the, you know, what's got two ears and a fluffy tail. Well, it sounds like it's a bunny, but it's Sunday school, so it must be Jesus. No, sir. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a good joke, isn't it? Don't you not get that joke? Okay. So half the congregation is looking puzzled. You know, you're in Sunday school. The Sunday school teacher says, what's got long ears and a fluffy tail? And the children say, well, it sounds like it's a bunny, but it's Sunday school, so it must be Jesus. No? Because the answer to everything is Jesus. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll move on hastily. Anyone else that you would really like to meet? Mandela. 
Yeah, some things are not. Yeah, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? That would be amazing. Um, famous people. A- anyone? Here's, here's, here's an interesting one. You know, but the heart of this story is Mary in grief. Any of you would, any, would any of you like to have a, a conversation with someone that you've lost? You know? You know, I, I, it's really funny. I was probably closer to my mum than my dad, but actually there's a bit of me that just wished I could have one more final conversation with my dad. With hindsight, there's stuff that I wish I could have said to him that I didn't say to him, which is a clue to those of you now. Say the stuff now. It matters. I don't know. Anyway, today we're talking about Mary and her encounter with Jesus. We're told at the beginning of the reading it was still dark when she went to the tomb. And I need some more help. How do you think Mary might have been feeling when she went to the tomb that morning in the darkness? What do you think she would have been feeling? Any suggestions? Grief. Bereft. Uh, other, you know, you know, that, you know, all about the loss, yeah? What about the idea of going to, to, to someone's broken body? How do you think that might make you feel? Uh, any other suggestions? I could, uncomfortable. I was thinking apprehensive, possibly frightened. Um, I think she must have been pretty determined too. And then she gets there and the stone has been moved. What would you do if you arrive and the stone is empty? What, what, would, you, what would you have done? Just think about it for a moment. What would you have done? Scream. Who said go in? We've well, got a few going. That's very, that's very brave. She doesn't go in, does she? She goes back and she tells the others. And that's when we have the race that the game was meant to illustrate, sort of. There's Peter and there's John. They race. John gets there first, but he stands outside. Peter charges in. Do you want to think about that for a moment? Why do you think... Um, why do you think... John stopped and Peter charged in. Just take a moment to think about it. Anyone got any thoughts why that might be the case? Why they responded in that way? Kim's hands up. I'm trying to avoid going to Kim because she's been, on, she's been answering so quick already. Um, anyone else? Come on. Anyone? D, go on. Charges, yeah. And um, John's the reflective one, so he stands back. It's about, the, yeah, I think it's a bit about how they're wired, isn't it? Yeah. One, you know, John was probably younger. He lived longer, certainly. Um, but he gets there first, but he doesn't want to go in. He can't quite go in. He holds back, but nothing stops Peter. He just charges in. And I do think it reflects their personality. Uh, they see the burial cloths. Now, here's a test. Who was listening to Sharon last week? Um, why did she say the burial cloths were still there? Anyone remember what Sharon said last week about why the burial cloths were still there? Dee's hands up. Anyone, anyone else that was listening to Sharon last week? I, 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 want, I want to know who was listening to Sharon's talk. Why were, they, why were the clothes left behind? Okay, well, because they're burial clothes. He didn't need them anymore. He was alive. He didn't need burial clothes anymore. And, and it says that that was enough for them to believe. Um, and the evidence for the resurrection starts with an empty tomb. And the question, what happened to the body? Um, you know, where, what happened to the body? Um, That's the beginning kind of all the questions about making sense of the resurrection. Why was the tomb empty? What happened to the body? Seeing the empty tomb and the grave clothes folded up was enough for them to believe. And we're just told the disciples go home. Mary stays outside. How do you think she's feeling now? There's a bit of a clue in the passage. How, she, how would you think? She's, the disciples have gone. The excitement of them rushing down there. She's left standing outside this empty tomb. How do you think she's feeling? Can someone say, yeah, raise your hands. I, I think I'm getting deaf. I'm struggling to see her. Confused. Yeah, I think confused. She's obviously distraught. She's crying. 
Um, and she looks inside and she sees these two angels dressed in white. Um, and then she asks them, what have you done? Have you taken away my Lord? And it's then that this encounter with Jesus that we're thinking about this morning takes place. Um, you know, she looks around and she sees someone, and we now know it's Jesus, but she thinks it's the gardener, and he says, why are you crying? You know, who are you looking for? And Mary, thinking he's the gardener, asks if Jesus has taken the body away. Um, it brings us back to that question of the resurrection. If the tomb's empty, where's the body? Has someone taken it away? Mary thinks it's the gardener that may have taken the body away. Um, it could have been the Romans. They had posted a guard outside, but we're told they fled. The Jews were worried that something might happen to the body. They might have taken it. Um, probably the disciples themselves had the most to gain for taking the body. But as we've seen, they aren't expecting this. They're confused. Um, and I have a couple of questions about this, really. If someone took the body, why didn't they eventually produce it? If it's the Jewish authorities or the Romans, when everyone's saying Jesus has been raised from the dead, why didn't they turn up with the body and say, ah, uh, ah, uh, there you go. He's, yeah, he, was, he didn't. He, we've still got the body. If it was the disciples, why would the disciples hold on to that lie for the rest of their lives and be willing to die for it. Well, I've quoted this before, but the person that sums this up for me best of all is Chuck Colson. Uh, have you got the slide? Thanks. He said, I know the resurrection is a fact uh, and Watergate proved it to me. He was one of um, Richard Nixon's attorneys. How? Because 12 men testified that they had seen Jesus raised from the dead and they proclaimed that truth for 40 years, never once denying it. Everyone was beaten, tortured, stoned, and put in prison. Almost all of them died for this truth. They would not have endured that if it wasn't true. Watergate embroiled 12 of the most powerful men in the world, and they couldn't keep a lie for three weeks. You're telling me that the 12 apostles could keep a lie for 40 years? Absolutely impossible. What happened to the body if he didn't rise from the dead? Mary's not expecting to see Jesus, but she does. Jesus speaks her name and says, Mary. And it's at that point she recognises him. And she turns around and says, Rabboni, which means teacher. And there are just a couple more questions I want to think about this morning. Why doesn't Mary recognise Jesus? And why Mary? Why is the first person to see Jesus alive Mary? Um, so why doesn't Mary recognise Jesus? Uh, I think there's a continuing theme in the resurrection accounts about the resurrection Jesus. He's the same, but he is different. Uh, and both seem to be true at the same time. Think about it. When Jesus takes our flesh... Um, we believe that in the incarnation that he is both God and man, but he lays down kind of the attributes of his divinity, being able to be omnipresent. He accepts the limitations of a human body in a physical place, being omnipotent, all-powerful, or omniscient, all-knowing, kind of all those kind of traits of divinity. We're told he laid aside and he accepts the limitations of our human bodies, the things we can do and the things we can't do. But it feels like post-resurrection, all those limitations are gone. And suddenly, he is still human. But the attributes of divinity play a larger part um, in his makeup. We'll think about this more. Um, he's no longer limited by human nature. He seems to be able to walk through walls. He can be touched, but then he can disappear. He can eat. Um, there's something completely different about him. And he also, though, keeps his humanity. He keeps something he didn't have before. He still carries the wounds of his suffering. Others see the marks in his hands and his side. And Mary's not the only one to struggle recognising Jesus. Clear pass, we'll talk about next week. The disciples on the shore... They see him, but they don't always recognise him. So we'll think about this a bit more deeply over the next couple of weeks. 
But why Mary? And this is where I'm just going to kind of come in to land. There's all sorts of reasons why it shouldn't have been Mary to see Jesus. To start with, women were second-class citizens. If, you're going to, if you want to make a splash, why would you appear to a woman? Uh, women couldn't be witnesses legally in law. You know, if you want to prove something, surely you would, you would appear before someone that actually could stand up and give a legal account of what they've seen. Um, she's not really, she, she's, not an, she's sort of a disciple, she's one of the followers of Jesus, but she's not an apostle. She's mentioned with them, but kind of, you know, why not choose one of the inner circle to appear to? There's all sorts of reasons for it not to be Mary, but there are also reasons why I think it was. She's someone that loves Jesus. She's someone that's been changed by Jesus. Um, And Jesus places a value on her that society doesn't. She matters to Jesus. And I think there's a message in that to all of us that might feel like we are not valued by society. It might be because of our sex or our colour, our gender. It, it might be because of the job we do. We, do we, you know, we feel that we are not of great worth. Jesus has a different set of values. You matter to Jesus. You're precious to Jesus. And, and that's underlined in the choice of this vulnerable woman who is grieving someone she loves and Jesus' appearance with her is to message to all that are not valued by society that they're valued by Jesus. Um, we're going to continue with our prayers and Julia's going to lead us. Got the microphone. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for this beautiful new day, for the spring, for the blossom, and the spring flowers popping up all over our lovely countryside, for the warming sun and the signs of new life. Today, our prayers are going to be focusing a little bit on Mary, Mary Magdalene, who we've just heard about. Some of us can really respond to how Mary was feeling that day. Her grief was unbearable, and she was struggling to make sense of what had happened. We all have days of despair and unhappiness, or feeling fed up. And some of these days just pass us by, but for some it takes longer, and some it's a real struggle. In those times, Lord, you are there. You're holding our hands. You're keeping us, walking with us and holding us up. We may not feel or think or experience you in those, in those times, but you are there. You know us. You know our name. And you call us and stand with us. Take our hands, Lord, and lead us forwards and onwards and upwards. Speak to us change us, love us, and keep us safe. Our prayer focus for this week is Tear Fund. They do an amazing work around the world, caring for the disadvantaged and the poor communities. Give them wisdom to to work wisely with these communities, giving purpose to every, giving purpose to every person who needs their support. We also pray for our own church family here in High Brooms and the surrounding areas. Be with us in our community and all the hubs that go on. Support and guide us in all that we do. Speak and respond to our individual and community needs and meet us in every circumstance that we face and draw us into your grace, hope, love and service. We pray all this in your precious name. Amen.
Thank you. We're going to finish now with our worship. Would you like to stand? down um g just kind up to us and just shared something that she felt god was just impressing upon her and it came from the 23rd psalm that incredible picture of god being our shepherd and caring for us and she was just had this feeling that perhaps people will be sitting here and, and actually feeling that, that they don't really know the shepherd and if you kind of you we have heard us talking about jesus and about god today and people putting their trust in him and you're thinking but i don't really know that and you'd like someone to pray with you or talk about that do speak to one of us at the end of the service. Absolutely. So yes, that brings us to the end of 10 o'clock. Lovely having with us online and um, with us in church. And want to have a great rest of the afternoon. We don't need to move chairs. So Isn't that great? Do next week we will. Yeah. This week we don't. And Wonderful. do join us for tea and coffee next door if you're able to. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you now, be with those you love, remain with you always. Amen. Have a great day. Have a great week. Jesus.
Jesus is alive The empty cross, the empty grave Life eternal, you have won the day Shout it out, Jesus is alive He's alive Jesus, you are mine. Joy and rest, peace. Earthly pain finally will cease. Celebrate, Jesus is alive.